One of the big milestones in a child's development is when he learns the principle of cause and effect. And if you're a parent, you probably know that uh, this typically happens at around eight months. So, for example, a child might splash his hands in water and realize that as a result of that decision, he now has water all over his face. And then based on that result, he might decide to continue splashing water or to stop doing it, depending on how entertaining he finds the idea of splashing water everywhere. Uh, now, this is not exactly higher order thinking. You, know, you don't get to put a gifted and talented bumper sticker on your car when this happens. It comes naturally to all of us at a very young age. And all that makes the curious case of Amanda Farias both fascinating and highly confusing at the same time. Amanda Farias is a majority leader of the New York City Council. She's a relatively powerful person in the largest city in the United States. And at 34 years old, she uh, is not an infant. She's an adult woman whose brain stopped growing a, a long time ago. And that means, to all outward appearances, Amanda should have no problem understanding the idea that actions have consequences. But yesterday, Amanda made it clear that, in fact, she struggles very mightily with this basic concept. In response to the news that many women are now getting attacked in broad daylight in New York City, Amanda posted this on social media. She wrote, quote, where are the men calling this out? So she's totally bewildered. She's confused. How is it possible, Amanda Farias wants to know, that women are getting sucker punched all over New York and no men are standing up to protect them? Why aren't there any men chasing down these deranged attackers and, uh, oh, I don't know, subduing them by pinning them to the ground? Where have all the good Samaritans gone to apprehend these dangerous and unhinged vagrants with extensive criminal records? Now, that might not be a totally unreasonable question, except that less than one year ago, Amanda publicly called for the criminal prosecution of one such Good Samaritan, a man who defended an entire subway car against a dangerous and unhinged vagrant with an extensive criminal record. And that Good Samaritan's name, you probably recall, was Daniel Penny. And here's what Amanda Farias said about that case at the time. And again, that was just a year ago. She wrote, quote, I continue to be heartbroken and outraged by the death of Jordan Neely and the lack of justice. The NYC Black, Latino, and Asian Caucus stands together to demand justice for Jordan and to pay attention to the systems that failed him so we do not lose any more black New Yorkers to senseless violence. Now, of course, Amanda got her wish after that statement. In fact, precisely one day after she called for Daniel Penny to face justice for defending that subway car, he was arrested on charges of manslaughter and negligent homicide. Now, if you wanted to discourage all men in the city of New York from ever standing up to a violent thug ever again, it's hard to think of a better way to do it. So now, because of the principle of cause and effect, there are apparently very few men in New York City who are standing up for women who are getting punched in the face. Now, Amanda can't see the connection, but it's, it's pretty clear, I think, to those of us uh, with functioning brain cells. And just for good measure, it's worth noting that Amanda has also called for defunding the police. So she wants a much smaller police force that prioritizes arresting people who exercise the right of self-defense, basically. How's that working out? Well, here's a snapshot of what's happening right now in New York as a result of this. Watch. You guys, I was literally just walking and a man came up and punched me in the face. Oh my God, it hurts so bad. I can't even talk. Literally, I fell to the ground and now this giant goose egg is forming and I'm like, just got punched in the face walking home. I was literally like leaving class. I turned the corner and I was looking down and I was looking at my phone and like texting and then out of nowhere, this man just came up and hit me in the face. I literally just got punched by some man on the sidewalk. He goes, sorry, and then punches me in the head. As I was crossing the street, a man looked at me and within a split second, pointed two fingers at me in a gun symbol, and then slammed a bag, plastic bag full of God knows what, down on my face from about a foot away, and I fell into the ground. Now, one of the women that you just saw was allegedly attacked in Manhattan around 10 a.m. by a 40-year-old man who goes by the name Skiboki Stora, who has since been arrested. We don't know who attacked the other women. According to the NYPD, this is the third time that Stora has been arrested in just the past six months. And all of those times, he was released on the streets almost immediately. Now, that's not because Stora was a Marine and an upstanding member of the community like Daniel Penny. Instead, for years, Stora has been posting videos complaining about white people and harassing everybody he sees. And mostly he seems to go after women in public. So here's just a, a handful of Stora's recent videos, which somehow didn't result in his permanent incarceration, even though he posted all of them publicly. Watch. 
Slow down. What you in the rush for? What you in the rush for? You pay attention so you won't walk into people. Can you stop? Look, hell no. Look at it. Look at her hair. Look at it. This is the only type of white black people that the white people them like to hang with. It's black girls that don't do their hair. That's the okay. only way that these All white right. people speak to them. That's the only way they deal with them okay. when they don't do their hair. I'm running for governor. I'm here. I know that's right. Okay, keep it up. Keep it up. Go right now. I went all the way on the other side. Democrats. He me and start recording me. Democrats. I pushed the camera out my face, and that's when he started hitting me. <laughs> you crazy. And he hit multiple times. Yeah, okay. Um, and by the way, not only was he not, uh, you know, permit, arrested and taken off the streets completely, but but apparently he, all, he he wasn't even banned from social media, despite posting video after video of him harassing people. That didn't get him even banned. Now, as you can see, Stora has a lot in common with uh, Jordan Neely. He has a long and well documented history of disregarding social norms and harassing people in public, and nobody did anything about it, even after he committed several crimes. But Stuart isn't the only person attacking women with impunity, of course. This is now a common occurrence in New York. I mean, getting punched in the face by random vagrants is now part of the New York experience, basically. Uh, watch. It is a random, unprovoked, vicious attack on a 57-year-old woman in Brooklyn. Watch as the suspect ignores another man walking nearby, then punches the woman in her face, causing her to stumble backwards. What happened? Why are you hitting me? Why are you hitting me? I was bleeding a lot. Mom, I'm so scared, so afraid. Dulce Petrarda was on the receiving end of that punch. Her mouth now wired shut, her face fractured in several places, drinking food out of a straw for six weeks, permanent damage to her lower lip, three teeth knocked out, and she might need surgery. In this Eyewitness News exclusive, Petrardo says he didn't say a word, just stared at her, then broke her jaw. He hit me very, very strong over here. And he break everything here. Everything's break. It happened yesterday around 5 p.m. on Grand Avenue near Dean Street. Pichardo was a school bus aide and was returning from work, just steps away from home when she was slugged. Her brother owns a restaurant across the street from where she lives. He and this employee chased the suspect down. <laughs> Johan Flores says he was still standing there. When they confronted him, he denied attacking Pichardo cold and emotionless. They followed him for several blocks and stopped him from fleeing until police arrived. Cops arrested 33-year-old Franz Judy. The suspect was charged with misdemeanor assault, meaning he's not bail eligible. He'll be released back onto the street. Released back on the street, of course. So in this case, a man did step up to help the woman because he was related to her. Otherwise, presumably, this guy would have never been caught. By the way, in case you missed it, there was a Black Lives Matter mural in the background of that report, or right where the attack took place. This is a movement that led to these so-called bail reforms that let this attacker out of jail seven times so he could assault this woman and then get right back out of jail. Because somehow that's a misdemeanor to break a woman's jaw. Keeping windshields clean is always a pain, especially with all the rain we get here in Nashville. That's why I'm so grateful to have Windshield Wow. Windshield Wow is an innovative windshield cleaning device that uses two magnetic cleaning paddles, one on the outside, one on the inside of your car, to clean both sides of your windshield all from the outside. Being able to clean both the front and the inside window at the same time is a game changer. Wish I had one of these years ago. Windshield Wow applies firm cleaning pressure and is super thin to get into all those tight dashboard areas. All you got to do is push around the outside paddle and the inside follows automatically, leaving your windshield squeaky clean. Washing your car windshield not only helps to keep you safe on the road, but also helps preserve the integrity of your vehicle's glass and paintwork. It's a simple yet essential aspect of car maintenance that shouldn't be overlooked. What are you waiting for? Go to windshieldwow.com. Use code Walsh to check out for a special discount. That's windshieldwow.com, code Walsh. So this is a movement that's caused a lot of death and destruction in this country, particularly in black communities. Uh, and so it's fitting that BLM was right you know, in the shot there. In any event, once again, it's a heinous crime that only an animal would commit, but the Democratic Party, with the help of George Soros, has no problem putting these animals back on the streets so they can commit more heinous crimes. And sometimes, sometimes these crimes are more serious than assault, as, as serious as assault is. Guy Rivera, the ex-con who allegedly gunned down an NYPD officer this week, was also a repeat offender. Actually, that's an understatement. According to the New York Post, 
He had 21 prior arrests and was found to have a shiv stored in his rectum during the shooting in an apparent anticipation of being sent to jail again. But instead of being thrown in prison for the rest of his life a long time ago, Guy Rivera was, was released and released and released and released until he killed a police officer. So getting back to the cause and effect, the solution here is actually pretty simple. There, there aren't that many people committing these crimes. It's a small number of criminals who are constantly committing crimes because they are incapable of living anywhere outside of a prison. They are incapable of being functioning members of society. They have communicated that message to society over and over and over again. This week, the NYPD's chief of transit uh, put the numbers in context. He wrote, quote, in calendar year 2023, NYPD cops made over thir- thir- uh, 13,600 arrests in the subway system. Of these 13,600 arrests, 124 people were arrested five or more times in the subway system in 2023 alone. When looking further, these 124 people have been arrested over 7,500 times in their lifetimes. So in case you're curious what your cops are doing, well, they've arrested these people over 7,500 times. So to restate, of the 13,600 arrests on the NYC uh, NYC, uh, subway last year, 124 of the people arrested have been arrested 7,500 other times. So you could drastically cut down on the crime in New York City if you just sentenced those 124 people to life imprisonment. The subway would become much faster overnight, that's for sure. And by the way, these statistics hold up outside of the subway, too. According to the NYPD police commissioner, as reported by OutKick, nearly one-third of the city's shoplifting arrests last year involved just 327 people. Collectively, these same 327 people were arrested, released, and re-arrested more than 6,000 times. That is more than 18 arrests per person in a single year. I mean, these are staggering figures. They, They boggle the mind. Now, in a city where the leaders understood cause and effect, the solution is clear. All you have to do is punish these people, these habitual lawmakers. You put them in prison and you don't let them out. That was the point of the three strikes laws before everybody pretended that they were some grave human rights abuse. Oh, no, we get three strikes. It's a terrible thing. You know, to put someone away in in prison, we we got, you know, only allowing people to commit crimes three times. That that is uh, cruel and unusual. We have to let them commit 15 crimes before we put them in jail. And even then, we shouldn't. By the way, that was conservatives, so-called conservatives, have made that same argument as well. What Soros DAs are doing is is giving criminals unlimited strikes. They're free to re-offend and terrorize the population as much as they want. Instead of putting these career criminals in prison, the leaders of the city of New York have decided instead to turn their entire city into a prison. Because, you know, you could, you could put the criminals in prison or you can make the city itself a prison and they've decided to go with the latter here. So they, they've opted to treat all 8 million residents of New York City as felons. And to that end, the mayor has just announced that body scanners are coming to the subway. Watch. So Mike and his, has a, and his uh, backpack on. He has cell phones, wallet, and all electronics in here. It did not go off. All right? Mike, go one more time. Vlad, Vlad has his two cell phones, and he also has a loaded gun, which is a right gun. These are the guns that we train with. We uh, practice at the academy. Go ahead, Mike. Go through. That's a real gun, but it doesn't have the firing pin in it. Scott? Yeah. Is that it? Is that wrong? Yeah. Just show him where the gun is. That box there? So... And like like Commissioner Gerber said, we're only allowed to search this area, investigate this area where the murder is. So this is what happens when you can't admit that a small number of people are committing the crimes. You have to pretend that an old white office worker from Midtown has the same likelihood of pushing a woman in front of the subway tracks or sucker punching a grandmother or, or opening fire as anybody else. But that's not true. These attacks against women, as they're being called, that are taking place in Manhattan and Brooklyn are not being carried out simply by men, right? That's what the councilwoman, the media, 
men are attacking women is the way that they put it, which is true. But you could be more specific than that because they're actually being carried out overwhelmingly by black men. Nearly nine out of every 10 assaults in New York City are committed by a black or Hispanic perpetrator, according to IO, which is an account on Twitter that studies crime statistics. Black men have a per capita homicide rate that's more than 15 times the rate for white women, uh, for white men rather, even more than that for white women, according to statistics pulled by the account Data Hazard. And these are statistics that outside of Twitter, uh, mainstream publications don't report on. And that's why I'm citing social media accounts. But really, you don't need these citations because anyone looking at these videos can tell the truth. Black men are committing a wildly disproportionate amount of these violent crimes. And in particular, it's the same black men over and over and over again who are not being put in prison. And because this is one group you're not allowed to criticize, New Yorkers are supposed to pretend that everyone in the entire city is equally guilty. That anybody at all walking down the street is, it might assault you. There's, there's no way to tell who's more likely than anybody else. And as they walk through the body scanners and women get punched in the face on the sidewalk, they're supposed to pretend that their real problem is that, quote unquote, good men are reluctant to step up. But Daniel Penny proves why good men are reluctant to step up. The powers that be are doing everything they can to demoralize and punish the good men. And then they wonder why there aren't any around anymore. And it reminds me of the C.S. Lewis line, we make men without chess and expect of them virtue and enterprise. We laugh at honor and are shocked to find traitors in our midst. Well, politicians like Amanda Farias have spent the last year not only laughing at honor, but punishing it. And now, predictably, the traitors are in our midst. If you'd like to see what else I have to say, you can access my full show by going to dailywire.com or by going to the Matt Wall Show Twitter page. Hope to see you there. Godspeed.